Welcome to another episode of Good Libations, our show about mixology. As you know, I'm Ethel Andrews and I'm a mixologist, or you might say it's a euphemism for a bartender, but mixologist to me shows a little bit more respect for the craft of making truly good libations and drinks. And as you know, this is some, something that I've touched upon many times on the show. It is not a compliment to a mixologist if you just guzzle down a drink, because you're not taking time to taste the complexity and the nuances in that cocktail that the person tried to craft in a very careful way. And I've often used the analogy of a chef preparing a gourmet meal. If you just inhale that food, that's really not a compliment to the chef. I mean, it shows that maybe you're hungry, but it doesn't show that you're appreciating the trouble that individual went to you to make something that was truly nice and truly creative. Anyway, in this particular episode, we're going to make traditional Manhattans with what you might say is a perhaps not so traditional touch that I like to put on them or a different flourish in making the drink. And Manhattans are really an old time traditional cocktail, a classic cocktail actually going back way past even the 30s into the 20s and perhaps even earlier. And again, this is a drink that incorporates bourbon. And I love that fact because in recent times we've had a glut of drinks that emphasize vodka or lighter type colored spirits. And bourbon is a complex spirit like scotch and like dark rum, which as you know in general I have a preference for. Because again, those particular base spirits, I think, make very interesting drinks if people take the time to try them out and to make those drinks, again, in a creative and not mundane way, but rather to make them extraordinary. And again, with a Manhattan, there's not too many ingredients in it, and it's a dry drink. But if you make it right, you're making an interesting drink that people will really like. And they'll understand why Manhattan, Sidecars, Rob Roy's, and Old Fashions were so popular at one point in time. And again, they incorporate darker spirits. And a lot of people avoid them too because they, they've heard that darker spirits will give you a hangover. I would have to say, in my opinion, it has more to do with using mixes in drinks. That's what's going to give you the hangover. Because mixes have congeners and chemicals and substances that shouldn't really be in a drink. They're more akin to a chemistry lab. And that's what, what's going to give you that roaring headache and all the symptoms of a hangover. At any rate, we're going to set about making our Manhattan traditional drink, but again, in a not-so-traditional manner, I'm going to make it. And again, I'm going to use a shaker to make this particular drink. And I'm going to add ice. And you have probably noticed that I'm getting my ice from a table instead of bending over. And again, you know, you can put ice in an ice bucket or even a cooler on the table, but it's not very realistic because you're going to go through that ice really quick. You're going to be doing lots of reaching, either onto the floor, into, better yet, a proper ice storage facility such as an ice maker, or simply put on a table like what we have here, which for most people's practical use is more realistic if they're making drinks at a party or a social event. But at any rate, we're going to put that ice in the shaker. And we want to put enough in to make the drink cold, but not so much in that the drink is going to be diluted. And we have touched many times to on the importance of proper ice storage. Because if ice starts to melt, if you grab for that ice, no matter what medium you may use, your hands, a cup, a measure, or whatever, that ice is going to transfer some water into the drink. And we don't want that because that dilutes the drink and takes away from the characteristics of that particular drink. And again, Manhattan is a deceptively simple drink. But if you leave out any of these ingredients, it's not going to be the same. So we're going to add our bourbon. And again, quality bourbon is good, but it doesn't have to be absolutely top shelf, as long as it's decent quality bourbon. We don't want to use the cheapest stuff that we can buy either, thinking that, well, 
you know, we're having a lot of people at this event, so we want to cut corners. That's like using cheap ingredients again in a gourmet dish. It's not going to come across the same, so better not to cut corners with the quality of the alcohol. And again, uh, Manhattan incorporates a bit of vermouth. And I like to make dry Manhattans versus sweet Manhattans, which use sweet vermouth. This particular one is going to incorporate a little bit of dry vermouth, just a little bit. It's an important ingredient. And like I've mentioned with martinis, this idea of just swishing it around in a glass is fine, but you need just a little bit more than that. You don't need too much, but if you leave it out, people are going to notice that something is missing in that drink. And we want to add bitters, in particular Angostura bitters. Now, if you're making drinks from New Orleans, um, as an example, such as a Sazerac, it's better to use Pichot bitters, which have a specific characteristic and an aromatic quality that Angostura does not. But in a Manhattan, it's the best thing to use, and just a couple of drops are enough. Now, this is definitely non-traditional, but I like to do this. I like to add just a little bit of lemon, usually in the form of some lemon zest with just a hint of the pulp. And again, you're getting the oil of the lemon in your Manhattan, which again is definitely not traditional, but I think it's good and a tiny bit of juice, and I like to drop that tiny, tiny spent shell along with the pulp and with the actual fruit itself into the shaker. And another thing that you can do too, if you wish, if you're making even a dry Manhattan, is you can add a little bit of maraschino juice from maraschino cherries. And I'm gonna do that just for the sake of doing it with this particular one. And one thing you do not add is sugar to a Manhattan, even a sweet one, because the sweet vermouth will take care of that. And, and again, just a hint of that maraschino juice is actually quite lovely and quite unique. So we're going to go ahead and shake our Manhattan. And again, the best glassware that you can use for a Manhattan, in my personal opinion, is a martini glass. I think it is so attractive. And uh, I think it does the best job uh, in displaying the beauty and the uniqueness and also the flavors of a Manhattan. So we're going to go ahead and shake it. And again, we use just enough ice to make it cold, but not so much that we're diluting the drink and ruining the quality and characteristics of it. So we're going to go ahead and divest it into the martini glass. And again, when you taste this drink, and again I caution you, don't attempt to leave the vermouth out or to use it in not the proper proportion, and don't attempt to leave the Angostura bitters out of it because it won't be the same drink. It won't taste as good, and those nuances will be lacking. Now, I also like to leave just a little bit of zest, a tiny, tiny bit of zest as a garnish in my Manhattan. And in addition to that, most establishments and most uh, mixologists will use a maraschino cherry, interestingly enough, as a garnish in a Manhattan. That's usually what is done, like with a whiskey sour. And again, there's a decorative value to that. It usually sits right at the bottom of the glass, as it does here, and it adds beauty to the drink and also you're going to get just a little bit of that maraschino cherry flavor in the bourbon, the vermouth, and the bitters. And again, when you actually taste this drink, you will understand why this drink was so popular in times past. And of course, there's been a resurgence in recent times in these drinks, and for good reason. At any rate, thank you for tuning in again to another episode of Good Libations. And we want to caution people again, too, to be careful to drink in moderation, to show appreciation. Thank you again. My name is Ethel Andrews. I'm a mixologist. And thank you for tuning in again to another episode of Good Libations. Specifically, this is the Manhattan episode. 
Goodbye.